Vanakam, namaste and blessings to everyone. This is Dr. Bhairavi Vala Subramanian, PhD, the Sky Priestess. So, two important topics, Mercury retrograde ends in Pisces, Pluto conjuncts the south node and squares Eris. That's what we're dealing with today. First of all, yay to the end of the Mercury retrograde. It means that a lot of the inward intensity that we have felt in our psychic journeys has come to an end. It does not mean that the psychic journey has ended. It simply means that the arrow has been pulled back to its maximal amount at this time. And right now, that arrow is slowly releasing and launching itself as Mercury goes forwards into Pisces and leaves its shadow period. So that's really going to come to an end about April 16th. So what we're doing is we've gone in so, so, so deeply over this Mercury retrograde period that right now we need to slowly, slowly, in an incremental and disciplined manner, clear the psychic debris, transmute the patterns that have come up, and heal ourselves and our ancestral lines very, very methodically over the next few weeks, specifically till April 16th, when Mercury re-enters Aries. I know that sounds like a lot, but we've just been through a lot. So there's a lot of cleanup to do. Use gemstones like black tourmaline, selenite, lepidolite, all the stuff that I've been talking about recently, use them to create grids in your home, crystal grids that can help you clear your space. Selenite is very good for that. You can also look at uh, month, space clearing mantras. Uh, that I'll also be sharing the Gayatri space clearing mantra, which I tend to use a lot, that can also help to create a safe environment in your home. You can use that several times a day. Uh, drink lots of water. Coconut water is really good for you if your system can handle it. You can also uh, work with herbal detoxes for yourself. Um, you can actually do it as a family, make sure everyone's body can handle it as well because that helps to purge and cleanse a lot faster. Um, you can use things like sage and uh, palo santo or rather it is preferred to use your local or traditional equivalent um, to keep the energy of the space clear so to speak. Those of you using Reiki can also use Reiki symbols to keep your spaces clear, to keep your body supported in this process of detoxification. And of course, salt soaks and salt baths or visits to the ocean will be really, really beneficial as well. It'll be deeply cleansing. Another gemstone that I'd like to introduce to you guys, for those of you who may not know it, is also blue kyanite. It helps us take the information that we have dug out so deeply and powerfully over the past few weeks and helps us integrate it a little bit more in our different layers of consciousness. Blue kyanite, like mercury, is a wonderful stone that creates a bridge between different realms, different times, and different layers of consciousness. So that's a very beautiful stone to also work with at this time or to use in a grid in your home. So that's the first part. Keynotes, mercury is still doing its stuff until April 16th. Gradual, disciplined, daily maintenance of clearing of space and processing of information that has come through. So it's not like ended, ended. The worst parts of it are done or the roughest parts of it are done for most of us. Some of you would have sailed through this, good for you, but a lot of us didn't. So a lot of the energy that's coming through is going to phase out and phase through the next couple of weeks. Now, a thing to also remember is that Venus is now in Pisces. She is going to be moving through Pisces till April 20th. You're going to be seeing a lot of the lessons that you've learned also playing themselves through your professional choices, your relationships, your aesthetic choices, your material value system, your income. So you need to be looking at these challenges if they occur in these areas of life as reflections of the work that you've been doing with Mercury in the past few weeks. So be especially mindful of not projecting um, whatever it is that you're afraid of or whatever it is that you desire upon whatever it is that's happening in your professional and relationship lives. So you just want to make sure that, again, you're using your spiritual groundedness and discernment to see things as they are and not what you want them to be or not how your fears are afraid that they're going to manifest themselves at. So again, there's a parallel that's happening now through Venus as it moves through Pisces. Keep the lessons that you have learned in mind. Don't just let it go. All right? Not yet. Take the time to phase it through. And so Mercury will be moving out of Pisces around April 20th. And that's generally when we have more of a break from Pisces. That's Lesson number one today. Lesson number two is the fact that Pluto is conjunct the south node in Capricorn. That's a very big deal. I have attached an article of mine that really goes into the depths of this, um, of this topic 
for those of you who are new to it of course there's always a much deeper analysis that's possible depending on your level of spiritual work and astrological familiarity long story short whilst all of this is going on the south node is conjuncting pluto and that means that a lot of our past personal individual ancestral intergenerational systemic and planetary karma is coming out it is forcing us to look at the super system or the macro system that we have created to control the flow of energy resources and material life on this planet it makes us look at governments it makes us look at banks it makes us look at our economic structures it makes us look at the ways in which we have wrongfully invested power in others or in institutions that keep power away from a more equal distribution to the people so there's going to be a lot of challenges that's coming up to any institution any individual that is accumulating power in a way that generates abuse everyone has different access to power which is fine everyone has a different expression to power that's fine but it is one thing to say that the power that you have is generated on the weakness of other people now I know a lot of people are afraid of, of stepping into their strength because they don't want to be seen as a bully. They don't want to be, feel like they're taking too much space, but that's not the power that I'm talking about. When you actually get power and resources and wealth and income by enslaving other people or by pushing them into unfavorable life circumstances, that's the type of power abuses that I'm saying are coming to light at this time. And as a planet, we are being asked to challenge that left, right and center. So you're actually going to be seeing, on the one hand, we've done all the spiritual work, clearing out, clearing out, clearing out the muck. We're going to be seeing a lot more of that countering to that power happening at the 3D level. And it is also happening at the level of the ancestral line because Pluto rules that deeper connection to the psychic underworld, to shamanism and ancestry and deep magic. We're actually looking at the imbalances of power and authority that have also come through and fed into our genetic blueprints. So it's not just happening out there, it's happening inside. So remember the big lesson that I talked about with Mercury and Neptune, that through all of this, we are asked to find that space of grace and clarity through times that feel extremely difficult, extremely scary, extremely challenging, like we just can't or won't survive it. But truth be told, we've been in the spot for a few years now. And so we have survived, we have been surviving it and we can continue to survive it. That being said, there are many souls, especially, you know, people who are in the psychic world or people who are very prominent in some way or another. There are many souls who are leaving the planet at this time. And whilst it is useful and vital to remember that they are going to some other different plane, um, it is also useful and vital to hold that space of grief that for all the tragedy that's happening right now, uh, the weather events that's, that's taking place in, you know, in the, in the Midwest, in Africa, in uh, the volcano that just recently erupted in Mexico. Thankfully, there, was, there wasn't anyone who was injured as far as I know. There's just so much happening. But most of us are still here. And we are here because we are working with these energies. And the fact that you can handle this is the fact that you are here, right here, right now. And that is something that you can take comfort in. You are stronger than you think. You are stronger than you realize. And that's the message that's being hammered home to us. So, you know, on the one hand, we can get really hard and really, really closed off inside with everything that's happening on the planet right now, but that's not what's needed. We are being asked to move away from artificial constrictions and bindings to our heart and the consciousness that our heart radiates. So even though all of this is happening, coming up through our ancestral lines, coming up through the superstructures around us, at the end of it, at the core of it, at the end of the day, we are still being asked to go back here, back to the heart, back to our seed center consciousness that allows us to align with spirit and to find the miraculous possibilities of change that spirit and spirit alone can provide. Whilst it is so important for us to do what we can as individuals, we need to hold space for those who are going and have left to different planes we also need to hold space for those who are suffering right now we also need to hold space for the energy of spirit that wants to come through right now whilst i always talk about maintaining a clear and clean psychic space it is also important for us to have a certain degree of openness so that we do not become numb we do not become apathetic we do not become resentful or closed up like you know something that's just about to punch you in the face the moment you come near it 
that is also one way that we get psychically crippled. So there is a balance between the two. I'm not going to ask you to shut the doors, have a happy-go-lucky life and forget about the rest of the world. There is a balance between the two. Now, Pluto conjunct the south node is bringing up all of this old layers of shadow. And it's not all bad because Capricorn can bring you the strength of the structure and the wisdom of time and discipline. Pluto can bring you powerful regenerative energy as you learn to transmute the shadow, but it means journeying through it first. This is also a time where people may be feeling compelled to go into psychic uh, disciplines or spiritual teachings that are a bit more intense than they really should be handling right now. So it's also a reminder not to go and search for intensity just for the sake of it. There's enough around. Pluto and the South Node conjunct each other in Capricorn are also being challenged at this time by Eris and Aries. And for those of you who don't know about Aries, here's a big, here's a little bit of a of a low down on her. Effectively, she was someone who was excluded from a wedding in Greek mythology. And then she throws the golden apple of discord down. And that creates a little bit of a tiff between the goddesses who then go to Paris, the shepherd, to find out who, as the apple is, apple is the word, to the fairest of them all, who among the goddesses is the fairest. And each of them basically bribed this kid to um, give the answer they want to hear. And eventually Venus says, you know what, you pick me, I'll get you the most beautiful woman in the world. That woman turns out to be Helen of Troy, Trojan War happens. All because Eris did not get invited to a wedding. Now, I know a lot of people want to redeem Eris because we want to see her as the champion of the avenging feminine who's been excluded. In my article, I talk about why this is not an easy or a safe equivalence to make. Um, I also talk about the political situation in the U.S. and how it is indeed fundamentally Erisian and how the type of systemic change and breakdown that we actually need to make a difference is something that um, can actually create a lot of collateral. It is wise not to associate the energy of Eris with the energy of the avenging feminine looking for a place in the world because that can also create a lot of different problems. So what I'm saying through all of this is with this very, very complex al alignment of Eris that is kind of burning through and wanting to be seen, wanting to be recognized, wanting to be excluded. And she's squaring off with this very, very powerful Pluto and South Node in Capricorn. What we are being asked to remember and what holds all of this together is the fact that whilst we do need to be more inclusive, whilst we do need to be much more thorough with our understanding of power and how structures of power have kept power away from people, we also need to remember to have a space for our heart and our spirit and our compassion because none of this is worth it if we lose touch with what makes us human even if the planetary alignments are designed to make us as inhuman as possible in certain ways we are being asked to go into the heart of this challenge and find our profound space of humanity you want to call that god goddess divinity fine but that is something that you can do and you can do from here no matter what comes up at you, no matter what you're seeing, feeling, sensing, whether it's something that's happened to you or someone around you or something you've read about in the news, do not shut yourself down. Have a space where you can be a little bit selective in just how much you take on, but do not shut yourself down because that is the way we create another crippled generation emotionally, psychically, and psychologically, and we cannot afford that on this planet any longer. Trust that there is a hand of grace that holds you and supports you at this time and be willing to feel whatever is happening in the world, whatever is happening with politics, whatever is happening with government, whatever is happening with people, the fact that you can hold love in your heart is the biggest act of resistance that you can have right now. And I'm not just talking about typing love and light on the internet and not doing anything at all. I'm talking about really feeling, really going into the core and allowing yourself to feel what is happening. That is the kind of psychically and emotionally integrated warrior healer that we need right now. Go back to your heart, stay with your heart, and allow yourself to be and feel what you need to feel at this time. Don't get caught up in the drama. Don't get caught up in the intensity. Observe, allow the energy that is moving through you to move through you. And remember that at your core, there is something a lot more powerful than your 3D material interpretation of reality will allow you to see. And that is your connection with Source. Take care. Many blessings. Ciao, ciao for now. Bye-bye.